Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to deal with a point uh, that was made in this lesson, you know, coming against uh, the doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, um, where um, you have these two individuals here in Arizona, um, which this one here in the blue shirt goes back to the old school, um, the apostles. Um, I seen the Apostle Tahar, the Apostle Kabar, the Apostle Ramla have uh, done videos pertaining to his history. Um, but I'm not going to get into that. I wanted to get into this particular uh, point he made against what we teach. Now, the man himself, none other than Vocab Malone, uh, walked up on these two individuals as they're out preaching doing what he always does and then great millstone came up and what we teach um which pretty much what you see vocab malone doing if you go back to the 1400s this is what <laughs> those devils okay um were doing as they traveled throughout the world bringing the message of jesus christ so Vocab Malone is doing the same thing, but he, he doesn't have the sword with him. But he does have a plan, and he's a part of a, a plan to get the Hebrew Israelites offered up and to be destroyed. Okay, but he's continuing the legacy, you know, of the Protestants, which were slave owners, which uh, held to the doctrine of discovery. Okay. And... um pretty much went throughout you know the earth destroying right not only israelites but many other people in the name of jesus christ okay and vocab malone you know he gets on airplanes or he drives and travels all throughout the earth following hebrew israelites around okay because he's condemned in his spirit so in order for him to sleep well at night which we believe he's sent, and we believe he's an Amalekite, a small hat. In order for him to sleep well at night, he has to somehow, some way, make us look bad or try to confound us. Now, these two individuals here were out teaching, and the serpent himself slithers up. And I wanted to play an excerpt from the video on a particular doctrine and go into it. And it's surrounding... You know, uh, Adam, Solomon, and Yahweh Shai being the same spirit. So let's take a listen. The one they use in Hebrews is the one where it talks about the priest offering sin for himself. Yeah, he didn't and have to do the, that. That's right. He's sinless, well, but only one is sinless. Right. And in fact, Jesus said it, right? We dealt with the brother in the, what is that? Shikari. Yeah. Oh, that was on Mill Avenue or 19th Avenue? They were on 19th Avenue. I think they moved right there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, yeah. So, but I remember we had went over there because that was one of the scriptures the brother tried to use where he was saying that the Lord was Solomon and Adam right. in the past. So he had to come back to redeem himself for the sins he committed in his past life. And I'm like, no, the Lord, the Lord created that. But you guys don't get down with reincarnation. I know, that's a devil doctrine. Why? Okay, because... So you heard it for yourself. Um, they don't believe in reincarnation and they reject the notion that um, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who is the son of the most high, could have been Adam. All right. And Solomon, which, as we're going to show you, Adam was the first king and priest on earth. All right. He was the son of the most high God. 
and through him we have the sacrifice how do you think abel was able to have a better sacrifice that was acceptable to the most high okay uh more acceptable than Cain's sacrifices because he offered up the right sacrifice which ultimately is where the priesthood that was under the levitical priesthood stemmed from it came from adam who was the first to receive the laws name the animals he was the first king and priest and we'll get into that and this is the scripture okay um hebrews the seventh chapter which we'll get into because what we have to understand before we get into this is that Yahweh Shai fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the duties of the high priest. He is our atonement. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's get that in the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. Okay. This is Romans, the fifth chapter in the 11th verse. It says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Yahweh Shai by whom we have now received the atonement, okay? And when you deal with the atonement under the first covenant, Aaron and his sons, who were responsible for that duty of the high priest, would offer up a sacrifice for their own sins, and then they would offer up a sacrifice for the sins of the nation, you see? And the scriptures tell you, Yahweh Shai did this once. Now, let's get this real quick in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter in the 17th verse. And this is what men don't understand. Okay, Christians don't understand it and a lot of Israelites don't understand it. Yahweh Shai fulfilled the duties of the priesthood. He was perfect in the law. Okay, everything that, you know, um, you see happen with Yahweh Shai, even the time of his sacrificing, it fulfills the law. To give you a quick example of this, as you read this here, Matthew 5 and 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle, showing no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So Yahweh Shai fulfilled the law. He came and did, as the scriptures say in Romans, the uh, eighth chapter. See if we can pull that up. Uh one second here. Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans eight and three, and I'm going to read it in the NLT. OK, it says the law of Moses, which was that first covenant, was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature, the flesh. We could never have fulfilled the duties required under that first covenant. We would constantly be in bondage. We would constantly be under a curse. This is why, so the Most High did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have, okay? And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins, all right? In the book of Galatians, let's get the book of Galatians 4. Galatians 4 and 4 says, but when the fullness of time was come, the Most High sent forth his son, which as we'll show you, Adam and Solomon were also his son, made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law, which were the Israelites who that first covenant was given to, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So, the Most High sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. Now, when you deal with the law, just to show you a quick aspect of how Yahweh Shai fulfilled the law, made of a woman under the law. Let's get the book of Leviticus, the 12th chapter. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman hath conceived seed and born a man child, then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of separation for her infirmity. She shall be unclean. And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. 
So Yahweh Shai fulfilled all of the qualifications needed under the law of Moses, right? So this would mean that Yahweh Shai would have to have been the seed of a man, okay? Born of a woman under the law. This is how the law required children, okay? It gives both the, uh, if it's a, uh, a man child and it gives the order if it's a maid child, which is a woman. So Yahweh Shai fulfilled this law, showing you that he would have to have a father. And the proof of it is in the book. <laughs> Let's get, see if it gives you the precept here in the book of Luke. There you go. Luke, the 20, the second chapter in the 20. First verse, and when the eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Yahweh Shai, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him forth to Jerusalem to present him before the Lord. So Yahweh Shai fulfilled that law. OK, that's just an example of how he fulfilled the law. He had to be born. All right. Of a woman who brought forth a seed. This is why Mary went through the purification process as required under the law of Moses, because she brought forth and conceived a seed by Joseph. If you take away this one aspect and say that there was uh, some immaculate conception in a virgin birth, Yahweh Shai didn't fulfill this law. So what he says here in Matthew, the fifth chapter. OK, think not that I am come to destroy the law, nor the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He came to fulfill what uh, the prophets wrote about him, his coming, his birth. And, and his sacrifice. OK, and he fulfilled the duties needed under that first covenant as the high priest, the sacrifice to bring us back to the most high. For I say verily unto you. Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle showing no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Let's read this in the NLT. Okay. And then we'll get another example and then we'll get into the lesson. I tell you the truth until heaven and earth disappear, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you're saying Yahweh Shai fulfilled the law, he was perfect in the law. Do you realize what you're saying? Because if you're saying there was a such thing as a virgin birth, Yahweh Shai didn't fulfill that law. He would have to have came through the seed of a man. If you're saying he didn't sacrifice for his own sins first. And then for the nations as the atonement. Then guess what? He didn't fulfill the law. And that's what we're going to show you. Yahweh Shai fulfilled the law literally. Okay. Every aspect of it was fulfilled through his coming. All right. Uh, one more example before we get into the book of Hebrews. Let's get the book of uh, Exodus 29 and 39. Because there's so many examples, but it's over, you know, a lot of people's heads. They don't really get it. Exodus 29 and 38, it says, now this is what is, is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar two lambs of the first year day by day continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning and the other lamb shall thou offer in the evening. OK, now. What time was Yahweh Shai crucified? Let's get the book of Mark. And when you go into the history of that, when you go into that custom, every morning around eight, okay, or, or nine in the morning, okay, the, the, the high priest would offer the morning sacrifice, and then around three in the afternoon, he would offer the evening sacrifice. Let's go to Mark 15 and 25. It says, and it was the third hour. And they crucified him. Let's look this up in the NLT. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. And when you continue reading, he gave up the ghost in the evening. He fulfilled that law. He was the morning 
and the evening sacrifice required daily. All right. But he only had to do it once. You see that? This was done daily by the high priest. You see? In the morning. All right. And in the evening, Yahweh Shai was crucified at nine in the morning. Just as under the first covenant, the priest would offer up a sacrifice every day around nine in the morning. Okay. And he gave up the ghost at the evening. Remember, it was darkness for some time. And then eventually he gave up the ghost. He fulfilled this law. See? And when you deal with the aspect of the high priest and what, we, what is talked about in Hebrews, the seventh chapter, let's get it. Hebrews 7 and 26. For such an high priest became us who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens because he's on the right hand side of the most high. That is our high priest. All right. He's he, he, he's given us grace and he is the mediator of a better covenant. OK. Who was the mediator of the first covenant? Moses, Aaron. So let's read this again. Hebrews 7 and 26. For such an high priest became us who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices. OK, first for his own sins and then for the people sins. For this he did once when he offered up himself. See? So let's read this in the NLT. It says, Unlike those other high priests, after the order of Aaron, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. Because you had the, the, the daily, you know, morning and evening sacrifice. And then you had the day of atonement where the high priest would offer up sacrifices for his own sins and then for the sins of Israel. How did Yahweh Shai fulfill this? And if he didn't fulfill this, he didn't fulfill the law. This is what we're showing you, and this is what we're going to get into. Unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They did this for their own sins first, then for the sins of the people. But Yahweh Shai did this once, for all when he offered himself as the sacrifice for the people since he is the high priest. So the question is, if he fulfilled the law and was perfect in the law and fulfills the duty of the high priest. How did he fulfill this aspect of it where he would what first offer for his own sins? And that's what we're going to get into. Now, let's get the book of Leviticus going into the day of atonement, mm -hmm. the law of atonement. See, which let's get Romans real quick. Romans 5 and 11. OK. Let's start at 10. It says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to the most high by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. <laughs> Not only so. But we also joy in the Most High through our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, by whom we have now received atonement. So through Yahweh Shai, we receive atonement, kapar, reconciliation. Okay, sins covered. For the elect, we have now received an atonement. Let's look up this word atonement. And it'll all tie in. All right. If you have the uh, diligence, you know, and patience to get through the lesson, this is a very important topic. Now, in the Hebrew, we know it's kapar. All right. Here is kata, katalage. All right. It says exchange. All right. Uh, reconciliation, restoration to favor. Now, who fell out of favor with the most high? The Israelites. OK, and under that first covenant, it was the high priest responsible for the sacrifices. All right. That brought Israel back to the most high. Now, once a year. You have what you call the day of atonement, right? In the New Testament restoration of the favor of God to sinners who sinned, who was under that first covenant, the Israelites that repent and put their trust in Yahweh Shai. OK, so. 
let's read this again. And not only so, but we also joy in the Most High through our Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed unto all men, for all have sinned, and that's Adam. You see? Now I'm going to jump to 14 to hit the point. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses because we died, because Adam received the loss. He was the first to receive and break the law or the covenant right <laughs> because he received the law we can we, we'll get that for you in the book of second edges the 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 uh third chapter adam was the first high priest on the earth you see but we'll get and show you that and that was the son of the most high as well and then at the time of moses we received that first covenant so death was the result of Adam's fall and from us breaking the, 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 the laws that were given unto us via the covenant made with us by the Most High through Moses and Aaron. It says, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude after Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come? Adam was the figure of him that was to come. Adam was the first high priest on earth. He was the first king and priest on earth. See, he was the first to administer the law. How do you think Abel had a more acceptable sacrifice all right, than Cain? Which ultimately was where the, the, the sacrificial system came from. It was given to us through Adam, who, according to the book of Luke, was the son of God. And Solomon was the son of God. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So through Yahweh Shai, we have received an atonement. So that would mean Yahweh Shai would have to have fulfilled the duties of the atonement. Leviticus 16, and we're just going to jump to the point. Leviticus 16 and 11. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself. So if, if, if Yahweh Shai is perf perfect in the law, even to e any jot and tittle the, 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 the least aspect of the law, okay, the question that we're going to propose to these Christians and what we're going to go into today is how did he fulfill this aspect? Because Aaron had to do it. Now, real quick, let's get the book of Sirach 45. And 25, according to the covenant made with David, the son of Jesse of the tribe of Judah, that the inheritance of the king should be to his posterity alone. And so the inheritance of Aaron should also be unto his seed. OK, because his seed would be the high priest. He will fulfill the duties of the high priest. He would be the one that will reconcile us back to the father through one sacrifice. OK. Now, with that sacrifice, the sons of Aaron had to make an atonement for himself and for his house, okay, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, all right, and then he made a sacrifice for the nation of Israel, okay? And you could keep reading all of these things when you read these little aspects somehow, some way. When you look at Yahweh Shai's life, he fulfilled these things. Okay, and you shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of the transgression of their sins. So the high priest under the first covenant had to make an atonement for himself and for the Israelites. Let's get the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Okay, in the seventh verse. Okay, and this is speaking of the old covenant. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's let's make this NLT. Because Paul, the, these these writings are very, very, uh, you know, when you read it in the old English. So it says that first covenant between God and Israel had regulations for worship and a place of worship here on earth. The tabernacle, which Solomon built the temple. The, the tabernacle was built by Moses. All right. And let's keep going. You know, it talks about the Ark of the Covenant. You know, 
verse 6, when all these things were in place of that earthly tabernacle, the priests regularly entered the first room as they performed their religious duties, but only the high priest, okay, ever entered the most holy place and only once a year, and he always offered blood for his own sins and for the sins of the people had committed in ignorance. Okay, so he, the, the, the high priest, if you understand what we're saying, the high priest, which Yahweh Shai is our high priest. Okay, what he had to do was offer up a sacrifice once a year for his own sins and for the sins of the people. So how did Yahweh Shai fulfill this law? Hebrews 7 and 27, speaking of Yahweh Shai, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sin and then for the sins of the peoples. He did this once when he offered up himself. So when he offered up himself, he covered the duties of the atonement. Now, the question is, we know he was perfect as Yahweh Shai. When did he sin? When did he sin? Okay, <laughs> and that's what we're going to cover. Let's see what this says here. All right, this is uh, the book of Hebrews 5 and 1. Every high priest is a man chosen to present uh, other people in, to represent other people in their dealings with the Most High. Is our lawyer. The high priest is our lawyer, our mediator. That's what Aaron was for the Israelites. Moses, too. He presented their gifts to God and other sacrifices for their sins. He is able to deal gently with, with ignorant and wayward people because he himself is subject to the same weakness. That is why he must offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as others. All right. Now, when Yahweh Shai came onto the earth, he was perfect in that time, but he still fulfilled the duties of the high priest. All right. And no one became, can become high priest simply because he wants such an honor he must be called by the most high for his work just as Aaron was that is why Hamashiach Yahweh did not honor himself by assuming he could become a high priest no he was chosen by the most high who said you are my son today I have become your father and that was what before the foundation of the earth <laughs> in another passage the most high said unto him you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek <laughs> which was the first high priest but in the heavens see now and we'll we'll go back to that now let's deal with the aspect of when did Yahweh Shai sin because we know first of all we know this let's get the book of uh Micah because the spirit that's in him is the spirit of the son of God now, when you get Micah, the fifth chapter, speaking of Yahweh Shai's coming, as he was going to be born through the loins and lineage of David, the son of the Most High was going to come through the loins and lineage of David. This is Micah 5 and 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings have been from old, from everlasting. So a lot of people think that Yahweh Shai just popped up in the New Testament. No, the one that was to come says it here in the NLT, but you, O Bethlehem, Ephratah, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel will come from you, one whose origins are from the distant past. So this the spirit that was going to be in this child was 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 a spirit that goes all the way back. And he didn't just come in the flesh one time. He came in the flesh one time to offer himself up as a sacrifice. But that spirit has been before on the earth. And it started with Adam, which as we go to the book of Luke three and thirty eight which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, 
which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Adam was the son of God. Adam was a figure of he who which was to come, which was who? Yahweh Shai. Adam was the first king and priest on earth. And let's prove it. When you go to the book of Genesis 2 and 15, and the Lord uh, Yahweh took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man. See, he gave him the commandment. Now, when you look at this word to dress and keep it, the Garden of Eden, it's a very interesting word here. Let's look up the word dress first. I buy to serve. Now, let's go to the book of Numbers. see here go to the book of numbers what was the high priest to do or the priest period numbers three and seven and they shall keep this charge over the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation to do the service of the tabernacle that same word the first one to do the service of the tabernacle was adam which the garden itself was a tabernacle that was the first sanctuary you see that <laughs> that was the true first tabernacle which is why they were doing the, the 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 services of sacrifice passed down to abel that's how he had a a, a more an acceptable sacrifice so that region is really the first temple okay but we know that, that the, the true temple is in the heavens. Verse 8, and they shall keep the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation and charge the children of Israel to do the service of the tabernacle. And that was the priest. All right. When you go to this chapter, Levites to be the priesthood. That was the priest that were to do that. OK. And the high priest were, were, were after the sons of Aaron only. Which, as we showed you, that lot fell on Yahweh Shai. So what, what the priest did at the tabernacle, that physical tabernacle, Adam was doing that back here in the garden to dress and to keep it. Okay, so to dress, we looked up the word dress. And to keep it. Shamar, to watch, to observe, to, to, to watch over it, right? Let's go to the book of Numbers again. I mean, and that, that, so, that same word is uh, many times, but let's go to the book of Numbers 3. Boom, same word. And they shall keep his charge, the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle. They shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle. Numbers 3 and 10, and thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on the priest's office. Okay? So, the first king and priest on earth, because Adam was a king, he was ruling. A lot of people think Adam, you know, fell in one day. No, that 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 story of, you know, the serpent and Eve, that, that was a history. It took time. Adam named the animals. OK, he did everything the Heavenly Father wanted done. That was his son. And guess what? According to the book, according to what we know, he fell off. He went off. That's why we're in this predicament. <laughs> Second Edris chapter three. And I'll just jump to the point and five and gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thy hands and did breathe into him the breath of life. And he was made living before thee, the first soul to receive knowledge, wisdom and understanding on earth was Adam. Why wouldn't his only begotten son be the first to receive the breath of life? Why is that such a crazy and weird concept? Even the legacy of good and evil was established through Adam. <laughs> Isaac as well. Well, that's a whole nother lesson. Through 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 Adam, we have both Cain and Abel. Those are uh, 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 seed lines 
One is synonymous with the wicked. One is synonymous with the righteous. The Most High said, I create darkness. I make light. I create peace. I make evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And on earth, it's done through his only begotten son. If you can receive it. Anyway. Like, why would he? Why? 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 Why is it so far fetched that his only begotten son came onto the earth as the first to receive the knowledge, wisdom and understanding that would be forwarded in the earth as a legacy? And eventually. All right. Make us to become Israelites, because what was at uh, Abraham restored to? He was restored to the legacy passed down through Adam. He was of that seed line of Adam. OK, uh, 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 through Seth. Noah, Shem, Arphaxad, uh, Eber, Peleg, and so forth. Abram was of that seed line. That's why I said Abram the Hebrew. That legacy, which at the time Abram was born, his fathers were idol. His father was an idol worshiper. Jake, our people were going off. But the legacy that was passed down through Adam, the sacrifice, that was all returned through Abraham who had Isaac, who had Jacob, who had 12 sons. So we're all bound to Adam. You see? Even when you deal with the breath of life that entered into the, uh, the, the dry bones in the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, that's the same breath that was entered into Adam. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding. We're partaking of that breath. As it says here, it, and did it, he breathed into Adam the breath of life and he was made living before thee. He was alive, but he was made living when he got that knowledge, wisdom and understanding. Us as dry bones, we were alive, but we were dead to the understanding and we became living when that breath entered into us. The same thing. But who's the first to partake of that breath on earth? The son of the most high, which is Adam. The first king and priest on earth, man. You see? Anyway. And thou lettest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. He was supposed to be the obedient son and the sons of God were to stem from him and be the upstanding ones on earth. Adam was the first to receive the commandment. He was the first son of the most high on earth. See. Unto him thou gave us commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed and immediately thou appointest death in him and his generations of which came nations, tribes, people, kindreds out of number. Okay, the sons of God eventually became Israelites. All right, but what happened? Death was appointed. We would go through a perpetual fall. Now, all human and mankind suffered, all right, but the ones who it fell on the hardest, okay, was the sons of God, which, you, you know, eventually became Israelites. So it's giving you the history. Adam is the first, okay, priest on earth to commit sin. It was through Eve's offense, but he himself sinned. Let's get the book of Second Edges, the seventh chapter. I believe it's uh Second Edges 7 and 48. O Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we that are come of thee, the fallen ones, the sons of God. See? <laughs> so Adam was the first son of God on earth. Okay? Is not Yahweh Shai the son of God? Absolutely he is. Was not Solomon the son of God? So we know Adam sinned. Right. And Adam was a, 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 a priest. That's where we get the sacrifice from. Right. Which really goes back to something in the heavens. But that's a whole nother lesson. Now, let's deal. 
was Solomon. Okay. Which he for 40 years. Okay. Had a kingdom of peace. This is what the most high told Nathan to tell David. Who was the father of Solomon. Listen closely. As a matter of fact, I'll get it over here. <laughs> I'll start at 12. Second Samuel 7 and 12. This is Nathan, the prophet, relating to David, the king, what the most high God, Yahweh, told him to tell David. And when the day and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, when you die, David, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. Now, we know for 40 years, Solomon, you know, did fulfill this. All right. But something deeper is going to be said that's, you know, he's also going to do it forever. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men. And with the stripes of the children of men. Now, when did Solomon, who is the son of the Most High, and let's prove it, you'll say, well, that's just a prophecy of your heart. No, Solomon is the son of the Most High. Let's get it. First Chronicles 2, 28 and 6. And he said unto me, Solomon, thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. <laughs> all right now adam was the son of the most high solomon was the son of the most high yahweh shai is and was the son of the most high what we're telling you okay is that as it's promised here in second samuel the seventh chapter in the 14th verse all right if he commit iniquity if my son which is going to be your son, David, commit iniquity. I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. We have no record of Adam paying for his sin in a sense where he was chastised with the rod of men. We have no record of Solomon. All right. Being chastised for his iniquity. We know he went off. We know Solomon went off. We know Adam went off. OK, we don't know the extent of Adam's sin, but looking at Solomon, you can kind of get an idea. OK, going off into the philosophies of the heathen. That's what Adam okay, or, or Eve presented to Adam and the sons of God. OK, there became a perpetual death and fall, but there was always particulars who stuck to the script. But again, that was a history. The garden ain't just a one day story. Oh, the serpent pops up and then the fall. No, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's really a history. Okay. But we'll get into that in a whole nother time. Let's stick to this point. I will be his father. The one that's going to come from your loins and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him as I took it from Saul whom I put away from thee for before thee and thine house and thine kingdom shall be established forever before thee thy throne shall be established forever according to all these words according to all this vision so did Nathan speak unto David so you have to have ears to hear and eyes to see to receive what's getting ready to be what was being said here and we were we were taught this through our apostles and elders man and it makes perfect sense. When did Solomon get chastened with the rod of men for his iniquity? And we know Yahweh Shai was chastened with the rod of men because that was the prophecy of him. Okay, let's get it. <laughs> we'll, we'll go back to this chapter, but let's just hit the point. Isaiah 53 and 5, which is a prophecy of Yahweh Shai. Okay, man. Let's start at uh, four. Surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the Most High, and afflicted. This is a prophecy of Yahweh Shai. 
but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes are we healed. So with his stripes are we healed. But again, he fulfilled the duties of the high priest. So that offering was for the sins he committed as Adam and Solomon and for the sins of Israel to reconcile us back to the heavenly father. He fulfilled the duty of the high priest. He is the son of the most high. Okay. So the whole book gives you a record of his son. Okay. He didn't just come, you know, uh, uh, one time as Yahweh Shai. No, he got it right as Yahweh Shai. He, he was obedient as Yahweh Shai. As a matter of fact, when Yahweh Shai was baptized, Matthew 3 and 16, and Yahweh Shai, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened up unto him. And he, John, saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven, all right, saying, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased, because through this incarnation, as he came in the flesh through the loins and lineage of David, he was going to get it right. He did not get it right as Adam. Okay. He did not get it right as Solomon. He got it right as Yahweh Shai. Okay. As a matter of fact, let's get Hebrews. Five and eight. Though he were a son, yet learn he obedience by the things which he suffered see that <laughs> and why did he suffer all right he suffered as a sacrifice for the sins of the, the 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 himself and for the sins of the children of israel but he didn't sin as yahweh shai he learned obedience by the things he suffered and being made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him, called of the Most High, a priest after the order of Malak Tazadak, who <laughs> Melchizedek, all right, was a king and priest. You see, but he was in his heavenly body on earth at that time. And, 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 and that's the order we're coming up under. Kings and priests after the order of Melchizedek. Heavenly bodies that cannot sin, but on earth. Again, what does it say in the book of uh, Revelation? The fifth chapter. Revelation 5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, Yahweh Shai, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to the most high by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us into our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. All right. And Melchizedek. OK, when you when you get Genesis. The 14th chapter. Salakia. Genesis, the 14th chapter. Melchizedek Genesis 14 and 18 and Melchizedek king of Salem king of Jerusalem king of peace <laughs> Solomon means peace and for 40 years Solomon gave us an example of what Yahweh Shah is going to do forever and if you if you are denying that Solomon all right that the spirit that's in Solomon is the same spirit that was in Yahweh Shai Break down Psalms, the 72nd chapter. None of you have yet to do that. Break it down and make it make sense. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, for he was the priest of the most high God. So he was a king and a priest, but he was on earth in his heavenly body. See that? He was on earth in his heavenly body. See? King of Salem, which is Jerusalem, OK. And priest of the most high God, king and priest, we're going to reign on earth under this order, which when you get the book of Hebrews, the seventh chapter. As we started the lesson, well, let's go up to the top. 
Melchizedek priesthood like the Messiah. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of kings and blessed him. All right, this was the first uh, uh, a priest on earth uh, to be tithed to by Abraham. Okay? And he was in his heavenly body. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, Malak Tazadak, and after that the king of Salem, which is the king of peace. <laughs> without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. That was the Son of God. Okay, in his heavenly form, he didn't need a father or a mother. He was on earth in his heavenly form and broke bread with uh, 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 Abraham. But that's a whole nother lesson. Sticking to what we're speaking on here with uh, Solomon, Adam, Yahweh Shai. Okay, let's get another point here. When Solomon was born. This is um, 2 Samuel 12 and 24. And David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in unto her and lay with her. And she bare a son and called his name Solomon. And Yahweh loved him. Okay. His beloved son in whom he's well pleased, right? It was that spirit, but he didn't get it right at that time. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet and he called his name Jedediah because of Yahweh. What does Jedediah mean? And there's so many parallels between Solomon and Yahweh Shai. Okay, and when you tie it to Adam it's just perfect, man. Yah Yad Yadya Alright? Yad Yadya Beloved of Yahweh. What did, he, what did the Most High say? In Matthew 3 and 17, this is my beloved son. So he sent his son multiple times into the earth to do some very, very great things for us. Because Solomon at that time built the temple. We had 40 years of peace, the United Kingdom of Israel, all 12 tribes under one accord. But what happened when Solomon sinned? We went into these various different captivities that can all be identify in the book of Daniel the seventh chapter the kingdom was rent and we went through these four different captivities after the fall of Solomon okay it was in the fourth beast where the most high sent his only begotten son to be that sacrifice that will return us to him forever which was prophesied in Isaiah the 53rd chapter okay and the question is who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? A lot of you don't have the true understanding is because the Lord ain't dealing with you. He hasn't revealed his arm unto you and his arm is Yahweh Shai. You don't believe our report. You don't believe the record of the son of the most high. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get that scripture. First John five and 10, he that believeth on the son of the most high have witness in himself. And he that believeth not the most high have made him a liar because he believed not the record God gave of his son. OK, and it didn't just start in the book of Matthew. Goodness gracious, man. That's why Yahweh Shai said, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me <laughs> to do thy will. OK, through 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 Adam. OK, we received the breath. We're partaking of that same very breath that the most high breathed unto Adam. That knowledge, wisdom and understanding. We received the, 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 uh, the sacrifice, the priesthood, everything that will be needed. To, to 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 cultivate us as Israelites, as the chosen seed of the heavenly father it started with Adam. Adam was a priest. I'm going to hit you to something. Solomon was a priest. Let's prove it. 
We'll go right back to this. First Kings 1 and 39. And Zadok the priest took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle. Now, who was that oil for? That oil in the tabernacle was only for the sons of Aaron. Let's see if it'll link you to that precept. Boom. Exodus 30. This, this oil was only for the sons of Aaron. Exodus 30 and th uh, 30. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me the priest's office. See? But Zadok, <laughs> the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle and anointed Solomon. And they blew the trumpet and all the people said, God save King Solomon. Because we know the lawgiver would come out of Judah. So it's so much that we can go into to prove that <laughs> because how, how, how would he be anointed with this oil? David was also anointed with that oil. But that oil was only for high priest. It's all pointing to Yahweh Shai, man. Who would come out of Judah, man. <sighs> anyway. The suffering servant. Okay. Who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Meaning he wasn't, Yahweh Shai didn't come, all right, in a, in, a, in a royal, he came on a donkey. So did Solomon. He came on a mule. The same kind of entrance to be crowned, to, to the, the king of the Jews, man. Okay. It says, so he, he, it wasn't nothing extra. It was just a very ordinary and basic coming. I don't mean he was ugly. He just didn't do anything extra to add any extra attention. He himself was the sign. Everybody was looking for a show. He himself fulfilled the very prophecies written in the Old Testament, man. This is a prophecy of Yahweh Shai. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of the most high and afflicted. He called hell because he had to learn obedience. And he did. Right. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes are we healed because it was with those stripes. OK, that he learned obedience. Again, it was said that the son of the most high. In the book of second Samuel, the seventh chapter and the 14th verse. I will be his father. This is what the most high told Nathan to say to David. I will be his father and he shall be my son, but I'm going to send him through your loins. And if he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. See? So when did this happen to Solomon? Hmm? It happened to you. How was shy? All right. And let's see. And then let me just get one more point out of here and then I'll get a few more points and I'll close it out. Isaiah 53 and 10. Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shall make his soul an offering for sin. OK, his soul was the atonement. <laughs> And he, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. As it was intended through Adam and Solomon, okay, it was fulfilled through Yahweh Shai, man. All right? So, boom. As Alazar say, boom. 
it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Okay, going back to Hebrews 7. In 26, for such an high priest became us who was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens. He didn't sin. He was separate from sinners in that life. He didn't sin as Yahweh Shai, who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For he did this once when he offered up himself. You see that? For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, make it the son who was consecrated forevermore. The son. OK, the son. Let's read this in the NLT. The law appointed high priests who were limited by human weaknesses. But after the law was given, God appointed his son with an oath. And his son has been made. The perfect high priest forever because he came onto the planet Earth. He did his duty. He was obedient. OK, which gave him the rights, you know, to conquer death. You know, and eventually he went back to the right hand side of the most high man and he's going to send him back. OK, very, very soon to deliver us out of this situation, man. So it should be it should be made very, very clear that Yahweh Shai did fulfill this law. He did offer up for his own sins. That's why he was beaten with those stripes. Because according to what we read in Hebrews, the fifth chapter, let's get it. Let's get it again. Hebrews 5 and 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. In LT, even though Yahweh Shai was the most high son, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. <laughs> and we should be learning obedience through what we're suffering because we're suffering for our sins. OK. Yeah, Yahweh Shai was the son of the most high. See that? That was the son of the most high. So was Adam. So was Solomon. We proved it. Okay. Let's get the book of Luke. 1 and 32. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom shall be no end. Fulfilling what Nathan told David. All right. Concerning Solomon. But. In spirit, it was speaking of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, that's why in the book of Matthew 1. Yahweh Shai is called what? This is the book of the generation of Yahweh Shai, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's a whole nother lesson, the son of Abraham. But the, the focus here is he is the son of David, which the son of David that was to come, according to what we read, that was going to be the son of the most high himself. I will be his father and he will be my son. But. And I have chosen him to be my son and I will be his father. So the son of the most high was Solomon. And he fell and he went off. And let's end it off in the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans five and seventeen. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign by the life of uh, uh by one yahweh shah hamashiach all right therefore as by one offense by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation we all fell due to adam and Solomon's fall. We all suffered from the son of the most high going off. You get it? Okay. But we're all going to be brought back to life through the obedience when he came as Yahweh Shai. The perfect sacrifice. Okay. Even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justi justification of life. 
And that's speaking of the Israelites. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteousness. Man, <laughs> you got to think our throughness as a nation, us being through started with Adam and Solomon. Think about it. That's why Ezra was like, oh, Adam, what has thou done? And then once Solomon's kingdom was rent, the, the, the kingdom, of the, that was our kingdom. It was rent. It was broken. And we went into all of these captivities leading up into now. But the sacrifice made by Yahweh Shai is going to redeem us out of all of this and put us back to our first estate, man. So we can rule on earth in those, those, those heavenly bodies, man. Under the king of Salem and priest of the most high God himself, which is his son. It says, moreover, the law entered that offense might abound. All right. So the Lord gave us the law. The promise was already made or has already set, but he gave us the law. All right. To what? So we can understand our, our offense in need of Yahweh Shai, man. But where sin abounded, so moreover, the law entered that offense might abound because the Lord wanted to make the creature subject to vanity. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And we got grace through Yahweh Shai. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even might so grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahweh Shai our Lord. So now we have a grace period to where we're going to be entered into a second covenant or marriage. All right. The marriage of the lamb. This is why through this grace period. The, the, the wife is preparing herself, trimming her lamps. First Corinthians 15 and 22, for as in Adam all die, even so in Hamashiach shall all be made alive. OK. <laughs> Let's go to verse. 45. Man. This is heavy. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. NLT that thing. NLT the scripture. Salakia so says, the scriptures tell us the first man, Adam, became a living person. But the last Adam, that is a Mashiach, is a life giving spirit. Uh oh. Also, we have Psalm 72. Which people who deny that Yahweh Shai is Solomon never break down. Okay, this is a psalm written by David. And what does he say? Give thy judgments, O Lord. All right. O God, and thy, uh, give the king thy judgments, O power, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Okay, and the king's son. All right, as we just read, is the son of David. Now, it says a psalm for Solomon, right? But as you read down here, okay, verse four says he shall judge the poor and he shall save the children of the needy and break, break in pieces the oppressor. When did Solomon break in pieces the oppressor? How is Solomon the savior? Hmm. This is why you men need to, to be taught again. These 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 principles got to be understood if you're going to be out there teaching the Bible, man. Verse eight, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the rivers unto the ends of the earth. Solomon only ruled out of the promised land given to Abraham. Right. That region, that's what Solomon ruled. But here it says Solomon is going to rule from sea to sea and from the rivers at the end of the earth. <laughs> Oh, man. Verse five, they shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. Solomon lost favor. <laughs> the kingdom was rent after that. After Solomon's fall. Verse 12, he shall deliver the needy when he cried the poor also in him that hath no helper. When Solomon's the deliverer, the savior. He shall spare the poor and needy and shall save the souls of the needy. Verse 17, his name shall endure forever and his name shall be continued as long as the sun. 
king of peace and men shall be bl- all and men shall be blessed in him and all nations shall call him blessed did that happen to solomon forever no man this is a prophecy of what was going to come to the beloved that's why uh, uh nathan the prophet by the spirit called solomon yayatya which is beloved of the most high because that was ultimately a prophecy as well so i'm gonna leave it there i mean you also have acts the second chapter okay to let you know nathan was speaking of solomon and yahweh okay but hopefully you know um that brought clarification i mean you know these individuals you know are going to keep being deceived and deceiving and vocab malone is going to keep you know trying to roll around and, and, and ride the coattail of the Israelites, but it's, it's going to come to naught. And the true understanding is going to be taught and continue being taught, and it's going to grind to powder all of these different doctrines and philosophies, including Christianity. Okay? Let's finish off with that. Luke or Matthew 21 and 44, 144, call Halal And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And this is what's happening to you people, man. Some thought that he was Elijah. Some thought he was Jeremiah or one of the prophets of old. And it said, Risen. So that, that would mean that they understood and knew reincarnation was a thing. And Yahweh Shai never rebuked them for that. Reincarnation is biblical. Reincarnation, regeneration, the same thing, man. Back again in the flesh, man. So I'm going to leave it there. Pretty sure other brothers may uh, touch upon it, apostles, elders. But if not, you know, hopefully this brought clarification and edification on what we're teaching when we say that Yahweh Shai fulfilled the duties of the high priest in offering up an atonement for his own sins, which he sinned as Adam and Solomon, and for the sins of the nation of Israel to bring us back. Hopefully y'all are edified because, again, if he did not offer up a sacrifice for his own sins, he didn't fulfill the duties of the high priest fully, and he's not fully the atonement. Again, he fulfilled all the law. <laughs> Shalom. Hopefully I'll edify it on to the next. Shalom.